Bless you, saints. I pray that each and every one of you is covered in the blood of Jesus and that you are about your Father's business, that we're all about our Father's business. I want to share a word with you today as the title of my message is Eternity is One Breath Away. And that's the reality. That eternity is that close and that parallel to us that at any moment when the Lord, Lord calls us we could cross that line if you look at the uh, book of Luke in the book of Luke 14 chapter 14 verse 26 it says if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yes, and his own life also, his very life, he cannot be my disciple. The Lord has called us to that serious of a walk with him. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. These are Jesus' words. In verse 33 it says, So likewise whosoever be, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Forsaken all that we have is forsaken all in this world to be the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're living in a generation that truly doesn't, for the most part, care about their eternity. They're not looking for a what happens after they die. And it's appointed for man wants to die and then, then the judgment. That's Hebrews 9.27. We're living in a generation that, that truly... It's an apathy. It lives in the material world, in the now, in a me, me, me generation, in that it's not paying attention to what's coming once they step into that eternity, once they step that one breath away, that last breath, that last heartbeat. And only the Lord knows when that is. And so this is a call for us to turn back to the Lord. This is a call for us to reflect in our life. This is a call to repent to the Lord Jesus Christ. And give our lives to Him. To live holy. To live in, in uh, not in rebellion, but to live in obedience to the Lord. And to do the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And so, this comes as a, as a word for us to be obedient to the Lord. When the Lord puts a, a, a call on your heart, puts a, a prompting on your heart to, to share with somebody, to speak to somebody, um, don't, don't, don't hold back. I've done it at times. I've held back, and it's like uh, then, I, then I feel so bad because the Lord wanted to do something in someone's life, and I did not yield to the Holy Spirit, or I was more uh, concerned of what I had to do than yielding to the Holy Spirit, and so I had to repent to the Lord. But it's it's it's. It's very important. Life is so fragile. Life is but a vapor, folks. And many, I know that many of you that listen to me are walking very closely with the Lord, yet are many, there are also many that are not walking with the Lord, that are lukewarm, that some are, don't even know the Lord, that are living in sin. And I'm, I'm begging you, I'm crying out to you out of love in my heart 
for souls to come back to the Lord, to make things right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of you are living in doubts and in unbelief and in fear. And the Lord loves you and He's calling out to you to come back to Him. Living in sin. Many think that eternity or, or the time that they're going to die is so far away. Especially the young people. They think they have the whole life ahead. And only the Lord knows. But if we're not prepared to meet our Maker, if we're not prepared to, to, to be right with the Lord, and we die in that condition without receiving the mercy and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and being born again, we will not enter the kingdom of God. Praise you, Heavenly Father. The book of Luke. The book of Luke, it tells us about the, the beggar and the rich man. The rich man that went to hell. He had it all. He had all the material things in his life. He had everything. And the beggar had nothing. Yet the beggar went to heaven, and the rich man went to hell. Let's read it, shall we? In Luke uh, 16, verse 20, it says, And there was a certain beggar, uh, forgive me, 19, There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and linen, <clears throat> and fared sumptuously every day. He had everything. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Notice that the, only the beggar has, was given a name, but the rich man was only a rich man. He was not given a name in the Bible. The beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbles which fell from the rich man's table, Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The dogs were licking his sores. He was begging for food. He was begging for something to survive. And the rich man couldn't care less. Full of apathy and indifference. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into, into the uh, Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes in hell the rich man lifted up his eyes and see many in this world gonna meet that end because they don't want to listen to the cries of the Lord to the cries of those that are crying out in the wilderness to bring souls back to the kingdom of God and they're gonna lift up their eyes in the pit of hell and it'll be too late then I have seen it myself. I have fell into the pit of hell myself. I, I lived it. I felt the fire and the flames of the, of the burning flames burning my body. I have seen people falling into the pit of hell with no, uh, with the, that look of horror. I have heard the screams, the blood curling screams in the pit of hell of people. In desperation and agony, gnashing and weeping, gnashing of teeth, folks. It's all real. And you have your senses, and that they're more exponentially intense than they are on earth. And you can see, hear, smell, remember, think, feel. You feel the agony, you feel it. You remember what you did on earth. You remember what you missed. You remember all the people that the Lord sent to you and that you rejected the Lord every time. You remember all the times you didn't have time for the Lord. You remember all those preachers that came to you begging you to come to the Lord. You remember all the words of, of kindness and, the, and love to bring you to the Lord. You remember and that is a regret and a torment 
that never ends. The fire burning the bodies and the, the torment of being burned all over your body, your entire body. You remember, folks. You know what you did. You know that you missed the Lord. You know your sins. And you understand the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand everything. You understand your judgment. You understand why you're there. You understand that the Lord is just and righteous and holy. So let this be a word to those out there that are living in sin and that are, are, are living in this world, so attached to this world. Let loose of the things of this world. Stop living in sin. When the Lord healed the, the, the harlot and forgave her, He told her, sin no more. It means repenting, a genuine repentance and turning away from our sins. And living a repentant life. Praise you, Heavenly Father. So let's keep going. Back to um, Luke 16, verse uh, 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and, saw, and he saw Abraham far off. And Lazarus in his bosom, the beggar, the one that he couldn't care less, the one that he saw as less than him, was in heaven. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, not one drop of water. It's hard to breathe in hell. There is no water, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime, remember. See, you remember. Remember everything. And live with that torment for eternity. Remembering what you could have done, what you should have done, what you should have listened, what you should have gotten on your knees before the Lord when you had the chance. And today, you're listening to this message. You have the chance to repent. For the Lord is so willing to, to, to forgive you. Merciful. The Lord is merciful. But we all have a free will. We all have a choice. So Abraham says, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received thy good. And now he is comforted. And thou art tormented. You are tortured now. He said to the rich man. You received all the riches and all the wealth and all the comforts in this life. But that one breath away from eternity he took that last breath and he lifted up his eyes in hell let it not be any of us my precious brothers and sisters and beside all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. See, you remember and you know the state of your family. You remember your loved ones that they're not with the Lord. And you're begging, you're praying. But the Lord doesn't listen to your prayers in hell. There's no prayers answered in hell anymore. You can pray today to the Lord and ask him to forgive you. You can come to the Lord today and ask Him to forgive you and He will hear you. He will answer. He will listen. He will love you. He will protect you. He will defend you if you come to Him and give your soul to Him. But in hell, 
prayers are not answered. And he said, For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Lest they also end up in hell. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And see, the Lord has allowed many people to experience seeing hell in order to testify, just as I'm doing right now, in order to testify of the reality of hell, seriousness of hell. And it is eternal. There is no escape. There's no changing back. There's no changing your mind. There's no crying out to God then. Listen how he answered and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And that's the state of many today. That even though the testimonies go out, and even though people are crying out to them, they will still not be persuaded. They will still not repent. I pray to the Lord that He will use this message to turn the hearts of those that are grown so hardened. There's many of you or many people out there that their hearts have grown so cold for many reasons living in sin they've been hurt broken hearts many that think God doesn't hear them anymore many of them are so heartbroken they've grown cold towards the Lord they don't want to hear the message anymore. But I'm here to tell you the Lord loves you. The Lord blesses you. The Lord loves you and He wants you in His arms. We know that heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents and comes to the Lord. Just one sinner. One soul. I bless you, my precious brothers and sisters. I pray that the Lord uses you in a mighty way. I pray that the Lord uh, uses this message in a mighty way. And let it be a call to us to grow closer and come seek the Lord closer more than ever. Let it be a call to, to not hold back when the Lord puts a, a prompting in your heart to speak to someone. You don't know if that's the last person they're going to hear. You don't know if that's the last message they're going to hear. The last call from the Lord. It is truly the last call. We're living in the last days. And it could be the last call to whoever you speak to. Before they pass on to eternity. May the Lord bless you in a mighty way till soon again, Lord willing, be blessed.